completing the square. <laughs> yeah, yeah, complete the square. Let me make this quick video. All right. Okay. We're live. Unless you want to be in the back. All right. Okay. So let's talk about how to uh, solve a quadratic equation using all four different methods. Uh, you want to include this as a supplemental resource. Okay. First, uh, so we have this example, x squared minus 7x plus 16 equals x. You're going to see something consistent in all four of these methods. And the consistent part is always set your quadratic equation equal to zero. All right, so let's start with graphing. So we're going to subtract this x to the other side, to the left side, and you're going to end up with negative 8x's. All right, so in all these problems, you're going to see x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals zero. All right, now let me turn on my grid lines. All right, x-axis and y-axis. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the standard form, x squared minus 8x plus 16, and I'm going to graph it as a function. So I'm going to graph f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 16, and then really all I have to do with this is locate the roots, locate the zeros. So this has a zero at x equals 4. That is the solution. Now, um, one reminder, if you only have one root, then you call this a double root. So this is a double, double root of x equals 4. That's how you solve by graphing. All right, with quadratic formula, once again, set it equal to 0. Once you have this equation set equal to 0, you are going to be able to extract your a, b, and c values. Notice that my a is 1, my b is negative 8. That's important because in the first step, I could not tell that the b was negative 8. c is 16. Take these values, substitute them into opposite b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You can see right here how I substituted everything carefully using parentheses. You can see that I handle with care with the discriminant, which is the value of b squared minus 4ac. I end up getting the square root of 64 minus 64, which is the square root of 0, which is 0. So I have 8 plus or minus 0, 8 plus or minus 0 over 2, which is 8 over 2, which is 4. So now with quadratic formula, I realize that the answer is 4. All right, that reinforces what I knew already. All right, what about completing the square? Well, once again, set it equal to 0. It's important for you to know your formula for completing the square. That is taking the b value, cutting it in half. So b over 2, take that quantity, square it. All right, so here's how it works. Again, x squared minus 8x plus 16. I'm going to take my b value, which is negative 8, and I'm going to cut it in half. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4, quantity squared, is positive 16. So notice how I add 16 to this equation. And I did it right here with color so you can see that it's extra. I ran, it's like I randomly added 16. But I did it so I could have a perfect square trinomial. Remember, to keep this equation balanced, you're going to have to also subtract 16. Right? Notice that those would cancel out and lead me right back to my second step. So add 16, subtract 16. Now, factor this perfect square trinomial. It should factor to two equivalent factors. It does x minus 4 times x minus 4. Then the cool thing is here, 16 minus 16, this actually ends up being equal to 0. So I don't have a k value right here for my vertex form. x minus 4 times x minus 4 is x minus 4 squared. Set equal to 0. I'm going to take the, square, the positive and negative square root of both sides. Well, the square root of 0 is just 0. You don't have to put positive or negative for that. It's just 0. So I'm left with x minus 4 equals 0. I add 4 to both sides, and I get x equals 4. Same solution, third method. All right, one last method, factoring. Once again, I am going to start by setting it equal to 0. All right, when I set it equal to 0, I have x squared minus 8x plus 16. I am going to think of how I factor this by putting an x squared and a 16 into my factoring box. All right, and I can think, well, to fill these diagonals, I simply need two numbers whose product is AC, or 1 times 16, and whose sum is negative 8, right? The two numbers whose product is 16 and sum is negative 8 are negative 4 and negative 4. So I fill in these two diagonals with negative 4x and negative 4x, which you can see combine to give me negative 8x. And now I factor the greatest common factor out of each row and column. So I'm left with x minus 4 and x minus 4. And I don't know if that's, that minus is kind of hiding right there. Yeah, x minus 4 and x minus 4. Set those equal to 0. So when I set x minus 4 equal to 0, I get x equals 4. And when I set x minus 4 equal to 0, I also get x equals 4. So that's a double root, a double solution of x equals 4. Four methods for all of these. The answer was x equals 4.